So back home again, um, nice drive back, no problems. Um, so <clears throat> I think um, what I'll do is I'll just do a quick walk around video of the car before I put it in the garage um, so we can have um, a video to compare it to because once it comes out of the garage, it's all going to have been painted. So hopefully it should look very different. Um, so yeah, I'll give you a walk around. It's good to see in the light what the paint works like just now because from maybe a couple of meters away, it doesn't look too bad. But once you get kind of closer, you can see that it's really not the best and not really up to the standard that um, I'd like it to be at. So um, yeah, let's have a, a walk around and I'm going to take some pictures as well and take some after pictures as well. So we'll do that just now and see how it's looking. Obviously I'm in the car just now, so I thought we can start here. Uh, you can see the paint there. Um, it's royal blue metallic and I got a couple of litres of it, which should be more than enough. Um, and you can see the headliner is kind of falling down there. And where somebody's, I don't know if you can see the rusty nails. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a bit of a shame because I might have been able to fix it, but I don't think that there's any fix in that. So hopefully it's not as big a mission as people say to replace the headlining. Um, just jump out. So you remember we've got this hole in the driver's seat um, and the seats need a really good shampoo, um, but we'll do that. And outside the car, so it depends how good your eye is, but I can see that that's been painted before um, and you can see there there's lacquer peel so it's not really been painted br brilliantly um, you can see that the vinyl strip that goes around the back window on the 16 valve um, you can see that's all cracked and peeling off that's just going to be with years of the heat from the sun and uh, just drying it out it's got the orange clusters on it which I'll change for the um, the smoked and red ones um, I picked up an original pair of them um, you can see when it was getting washed that they've blown off the G from the golf badge I was kind of leaning towards just buying some new ones so that's decided that for me um, probably won't paint these bumpers I mean obviously I'm going to paint the body coloured part but um, I'm hoping that some bumper black should just bring that up nicely because it'd be good to leave as much of it as original as possible. Um, the wheels are really in good condition. They've obviously been reconditioned at some point, but I'm not going to paint the whole car and then just put the wheels back on it as they are. So once I've got it on the ramp and I'm happy with where it's sitting, um, I'll take the wheels off and drop them off to get powder coated. You can see there's a wee ding there and there are wee dings on the car but from that point of view it's not too bad um, that door has been painted as well at some point um, and you can see the rust bubble down there you can see I don't know it's a bit yeah you can see it now it's just a bit of a kind of sketchy paint it looks as though somebody's kind of maybe just put the paint on a little bit too hard there um, and that's what's that's what's happened um, sometimes you can you know wet sand it down and, and make it look good but um, we're painting all anyway so it doesn't really matter I'm gonna repaint the grill I believe that's meant to be Mars red and um, but we'll check that and um, I probably will put the clear indicators on because they look a million times better than those and this swing's not too bad. I've got some new side repeaters. Um, and uh, some scratches scratches on the door. Again, that door's definitely been painted. Um, you know, I think most of the car's been probably painted at, at some point. If you can see that on the sunroof, you see how the paint's kind of dull. Um, again, that's been, it might have been aerosoled actually, um, it's like been put on really hard 
and it hasn't been uh, wet sanded and and buffed so a wee bit of corrosion there um, these could be the original um, number plates it is obviously from a VW dealer and you might think that if it was the original ones they would have put them on straight but having worked in a new car dealership you'd be amazed at how often brand new cars come out with squid number plates um, and the roof quite a lot of light scratching as well looks like it's been through a car wash at some point uh, which is never a good idea but we're painting that anyway but um, I'm just noticing the, the door there as well you can see the paint's not too good there so so once we finished it'll have a, a nice uniformed paint job um, it'll all be fresh and um, it should be looking a hundred times better um, so I'm actually kind of looking forward to getting stuck into that because I'm a bit more confident about doing that um, than I'm about doing mechanical stuff I've never done before I have a slight better idea what I'm doing uh, you can see that there's kind of shallow ding in the bonnet there I'll probably get the Dent Devils guy that I used to come around and just see if there's anything that he can he can take out because I don't really want to use any filler unless I have to so um, there we go so that's how it's looking just now we'll get it in the garage tomorrow and we'll start stripping it down all right so I'm um, back in the garage again and um, look about as good as I feel <laughs> but never mind just need to push on um, and um, so basically what I'm going to do now is just take all the plastic trim off and try and take the windows out. So I'll stick that on time lapse so you can watch it being done. And then um, <coughs> it'll probably be a case of um, just thousand gritting most of it. And then um, we'll, see what, we'll see what's happening with the, the rusty bits. Um, I might need to use a more coarse grit on them and obviously uh, there might be some bits that need filled so but first things first we need to um get rid of the all the plastic molding so i'm not going to take the bumpers off because i don't really have anywhere to paint them and um, if i take them off the car so um i'll just um mask them off really well but um <coughs> i will take the grill out because it'd be kind of stupid not to it's so easy to take it out so let's get cracking and see how we get on a video online and they make uh, it look really easy just um, gently stick a screwdriver in behind the rubber seal and uh, gently prise the glass out well I tried that and that's what happened <clears throat> so um, yeah that's not the best you can still hear it cracking away so hmm I tried like different corners and um, it was, um, uh, it seemed to be kind of lifting a bit from this corner, but then it just smashed. <laughs> so I think I'll try watching some more videos before I try and take any more windows out. Um, it's a shame because 
I'm not sure about this, but all the other glass in the car anyway is original. Well, maybe it's not. Mm. Ah, okay, I'm mixing up the cars. The black, the other black one, I think, or the one of the black ones, still has the reg number stamped on it. On it, so. Um. Yeah, that's the original VW glass on the side there. Um. Anyway. Uh, I've done it now, so <laughs> there's not much point in um, getting upset about it. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is put some masking tape on the glass. Um, and I'm going to hope that might help to keep it together. Um, you can still see it's like cracking away. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, yeah. So I'll try putting some masking tape on it. Whether that's going to make any difference or not, I'm not really sure. But um, if I do and um, it all kind of shatters out, then at least I tried something. It is at least safety glass, so it should kind of stay semi in one piece kind of thing in theory um but i guess we'll find out didn't really work um I tried to kind of take it out of the way I was trying to take it out and hopefully try and get it in maybe not one big piece but some bigger pieces but that didn't really work so I basically just tried to smash as much of it as possible into the box instead of it going everywhere but there's still quite a lot of glass everywhere um luckily I can just lift the car up in the air so I don't really need to worry about bursting tires and things um so I think I better go and grab a Hoover and um, try and get as much of this glass out as possible. I did try, I did manage to get quite a lot of it in the box, so I'll have a look. And um, that's how not to take out a glass car window. But on the bright side, at least it's out and I will really need to figure out a better way of taking it out um, before I try and take out the other ones or this is going to get really expensive really fast. So. Hey ho, never mind. Um, as I keep saying, if you're going to do things that you've never done before, then there's going to be fails and um, things that will cost you money that you don't expect. And um, it's still a lot cheaper than getting somebody else to do everything for you. So just got to uh, deal with it. But um, the word I said when it actually happened <laughs> wasn't quite as polite or uh, chilled out as that, as I'm sure you can guess. But Anyway, this is made for kids, so I'll I'll shut up. So anyway, um, yeah, I think I'll go and grab a Hoover. Um, I'll show you what it's looking like. I, I did manage to get quite a lot of it in the box, to be fair. But I also did manage to get quite a lot of it in the car. And yeah, quite a lot on the floor. Um, I think most of it's in the box, so I'll call that a win, sort of. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go and grab a Hoover and Hoover up as much glass as I possibly can because... Glass is not really what I want all over the floor of my garage. So I'm going to do that now. And then I think we'll pick the car up off the ground just slightly. Um, and um, that means I don't need to worry about driving over it. Because as you know with glass, you think you've got it all and then you keep finding it for ages. But I'd be deep cleaning the garage before we actually start painting. So um, hopefully by that point at least... I've definitely got all of it. Okay, I'm off to get a Hoover. So uh, while I'm on a roll, I thought it might be uh, a good idea to try taking out another window um, and uh, hopefully not smash this one. Um, I'm going to try a smaller screwdriver. Um, I feel like I was being pretty gentle, but maybe not gentle enough. So this is a smaller window, so maybe it will come out more easily. Um, I've just finished hoovering up the glass, or most of it anyway, so 
fingers crossed this doesn't break because um and obviously i'm just going to need to do the same thing again <laughs> but uh yeah we'll see um yeah here goes nothing even not time lapse in this so the sadistic folk can get a laugh at me um potentially breaking another window and uh the nicer folk can feel my pain <laughs> and uh safety glasses this time i know it looks like i'm going skiing but believe it or not they are safety glasses I just like I did this on the other one, just separating the seal a little bit. Not that it really helped with the other one, but seems to kind of make sense that it's been in there for a while, so it's going to be kind of stuck. Yeah, this maybe seems like a better tactic, just kind of going along and loosening it bit by bit. Maybe that's what the guy in the video did before he just grabbed the screwdriver and pulled it out. Every time I hear a noise, I think, oh no, I've cracked it again. Probably wouldn't make a very good car thief. Obviously, if I use a bigger screwdriver, I'll get more leverage, but I'm also more likely to break it. Um, I've kind of gone from one extreme to the other. Um, <clears throat> see if I can see another flathead. You definitely see that, see that that seal's sitting out more. Um, the other option is obviously cutting the seals. You see it flexing, but I don't think it's... Um, I'm worried about putting any more pressure on it because that might happen. So I think what I'm going to do is just cut the seals. I think it's about a hundred quid for a set of seals for this and to break the window I'm going to need a new seal anyway. Heard a bit of creaking there I didn't like. where you wish you had some of those sucker things. Wow, that's a big seal. Yeah, it's not it's not that thick. Oop. So um obviously I've cut out where you know the thicker bit on the outside but I can see why you're supposed to be able to pull them out because the seal on the inside is really, there's not really much to it. Um, but I can also see why the back one broke because it's been in there for 30 years. <clears throat> um, it's not altogether surprising that it's not that easy to get it out. Um, Alright, well, 
I got one out without breaking it. <laughs> so I think um, I'll fire back onto time lapse, and uh, I'm just going to do exactly the. I'm just going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm just going to cut the outside of the rubber. I think it's probably easier to cut the inside, to be honest. But again, I don't have anyone to hold it, so I'd rather not smash any more windows if I can help it. Um. So yeah, I'll go and take the other side out. Um. The front windows, obviously, I just need to wind them down, and then um, I'm gonna. I'll be able to cut the windscreen seals on the inside because obviously it's kind of, you know, gravity should hopefully hold it in place. I suppose I could leave the windscreen wipers on to help hold it in place. In theory, um, so yeah, I'll go and I'll go and cut the other one out. Um, now that I've fixed the, fixed the electric windows, the front ones should just go down. Although I need to tighten up one of the regulators because it's not really working that well. Um, I'm not sure whether it's just because it's an aftermarket regulator or because it was me that fitted it, but we'll get it right. Um, so anyway, enough waffling, back onto time lapse, do the other window and um, have a go at the windscreen. And then I can start taking things like the plastic wheel arch covers off and the rubbing strips down the side, the side mouldings. And um, yeah, hopefully today some thousand grit sanding discs are arriving or maybe have arrived already. Um, because in which case I could actually get on with sanding it depending on how much, how long it takes to do the rest of it. It took me ages to get the rear boot lock off. Um, I looked at a couple of videos and looked in the manual and I think they were maybe designed for ones without central locking or something because it didn't have to tell you how to take the rod out that was the bit I was kind of struggling with so eventually I figured it out um, although I did break a plastic clip um, so I'll need to add that to the list of things to buy before I try and put it back together again but anyway enough waffle crack on and um, hopefully we can get this thing ready for sanding and um, then we can get painting it well after we do all the prep mm -hmm. 